a quick question first. How many of you have actually read the books? How many of you notice just a little change to the book at the end there? Just a teeny change. Well, I'm sure you got some questions. So do I. So let's ask them. First up, you know him, Ronald Moore. Meryl Davis, up next. I do love him. John Bell. John Bell! Right next. Please be kind to him. He's rather shy, Richard Rankin. She looks like a princess tonight, Sophie Skelton. Ooh. Our Jamie, Sam Hewen. Ladies and gentlemen, the star, Katrina Balfi. Yeah. Hi. You were all southern then. Hi. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Okay, they prepared them backstage, if you're wondering. That's not tea. It's not <laughs> All right, Katrina and Sam, you first. <laughs> so this ended with the incredible scene on the boat. Can you talk about shooting that? Did you know ahead of time that there would be no sound, no dialogue, and there would be a song over that? Katrina? No. <laughs> I'm glad I cried for two days. <laughs> Um, no, we never know any of those things, but it's cool. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's a real introduction to Stephen Bonnet and to how... Mm. Yes. Oh, he's so misunderstood. <laughs> Sam, uh, what did you think about it when you saw it? Say what? Sam, I said it to Sam. What? Sorry, was the question? Sam, hi. <laughs> Welcome to SCAD. Uh, uh, what did you think of that when you saw that you, there was no sound Stephen Bonnet? No, when you saw that scene with the music. Um, it's, uh, to be honest, what I thought when I saw Katrina in the scene, uh, obviously I'm outside being beaten for 20 minutes, <clears throat> but what I could see uh, is Katrina and this, and actually Ed, Spielers or Spielers, however we pronounce his name. <laughs> Nobody knows. How no to one say knows. His name if anyone <laughs> can let us know, but um, it was an incredible performance by them, and um, it, it, extremely, um, extremely haunting. And uh, yeah, like I, I think, well done, Katrina. It was uh, fantastic. And Ed, he did all right. He's a, he's fantastic. All right, so Ron and Mary, talk about why you made the little change from the book with the rings. Uh, about the rings. Correct. Uh, yeah, in the book, it was the other ring that uh, Bonnet took, right? But think thinking know. ahead, for those of you who know the books, we started talking about, well, there's a... Wow, are we all friends here? Do we all know the books? Yeah. Okay, so this is not a spoiler. You can just say it needed to be noticeable. It needed to be noticeable later, which ring was which, and the plain gold band wouldn't be noticeable as like, oh, that's clearly my mother's ring. Whereas the other one clearly would. So that was kind of why we made that change. Uh, now uh, you've got uh, it. <laughs> Wait, who, whose mother? <laughs> Wait, he took your ring? Oh, God. <laughs> God, that guy. All right, now the use of uh, Ray Charles' song. Tell me about that decision. Uh, in the script, it was uh, America. Oh, it was always America the Beautiful, but it was a piece of score. And then we were in the editing room, and now the mists of time are sort of unclear we're on whose sure. idea. Yeah, exactly. 
I think I took credit for it at some point, but it might have been Matt Roberts who came up with it. Somebody in editing, because we were sitting in editorial watching the cut, uh, the writers and the producers. It was someone with a beard. It was someone with a beard. <laughs> came up that with, hey, let's do Ray Charles. anyone on the show. <laughs> and once you added a vocal to it, once it became not just an instrumental, once it was a vocal piece, then it felt like the only way to really do that justice was to then drop the, the sound from the live action and go with the piece. And it just like carried you into this other place. So hopefully that was successful. Yeah, I mean, I think at first we were a little shocked seeing the editing room, but there was kind of feeling of like, welcome to America, Jamie and Claire. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't just like a welcome, it's like, welcome guys, this is gonna be crazy. And it was kind of a holy crap moment. Did you like it? What'd you think? All right, so John, this is for you. So there was also a new cast member in that pub scene at the start, and he, uh, he was there with you, but he ended up getting cut out from that moment. Can you reveal the actor and tell me why he was such a him challenge to work with? A challenge to work <laughs> with? Was he a challenge to work with? I work with Kat and Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, young one, behave. I like him. No, he was an absolute pleasure to work with. Tell, tell the good folks who it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I've had the pleasure of... I think he's going to walk past the stage. That's what I'm minute. thinking. Just I'm like, wander around when is he going to turn up? Um, yeah, so I had the, um, the pleasure of working with Dewey, who plays Rolo, um, who I can tell has already stolen everybody's hearts here. Um, he stole mine when I first met him a year ago now. Um, so yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. And there's some stuff coming out where you will understand how I just came to find this dog. Did you For dye, the super fans. Did you dye your hair the same color as the dog? <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, I did it to match his eyes. I like it. Wait, but you do have a special ring on. I do, yes. So I don't know if it's news, but I just turned 21. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. So, so this was my present from my mum. Uh, we decided we wanted oh, this. A this festival. This whole festival. <laughs> no, this beautiful ring I'm wearing just now, and it tells a story. It, unfortunately, Rollo can't be here tonight, so I'm wearing them on my finger. Aww. Rollo's in quarantine right now. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what's wrong with Rollo's brother? Because there's two of them, but we, we don't, don't even use one of them. We don't talk about whiskey. <laughs> No, we did, we did, um, initially we thought we would need both, kind of like Lassie, a, a dog and a backup dog, because one dog wouldn't be able to do everything, and, and so... <laughs> refuses um, to say its lines. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or, or like uh, Dewey, uh, he sleeps all the time. Um, so we have, we brought two brothers, um, McDew, Dewey, and Whiskey, um, but it turned out Whiskey... Um, uh, just wasn't quite as big as Dewey, and, and we thought Dewey might be a little ferocious, but it turns out Dewey's like the most laid back, sleepy dog. Dewey of all time. is way too goddamn nice. <laughs> I mean, you saw at the end there, you know, he's supposed to go and, you know, be really angry, and he's like, oh, hi. <laughs> oh, there's pirates here to kill us all. I'll go lick you. I think he takes after the actor. The <laughs> <laughs> nice, but dim. I know. I mean, no, no, no. I'm joking. I'm joking. I feel, Ron, you should definitely do the voice of Dewey. You know? I like doing the voices. I'll just dub them all. Oh, hello. All right, as great as this first episode is, it suffers from a great element, and it's called the lack of, of uh, Roger and Sophie, or uh, Sophie, Brianna Itis. Excuse me. No, no cure. When do we see you two? How long must we wait? A couple years. A couple years. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the final cut of any of the episodes, so maybe not at all. You're not in it at all. 
Yeah, we've been replaced by Rollo. Yeah, it would, seem, it would seem so. Ron's doing the voice. <laughs> I do a pretty mean Roger. Yeah, you do, I do Bri good what's your Brianna like? Do you do a Roger? Come on, Ron. Come on, let's hear the oh, Roger. You know, oh, Ron. No, all my Scottish accents sound like the, the Lucky Argo. Charms guy. <laughs> It's funny because so, so do all the Scottish actors. <laughs> You're slightly outnumbered to you, you know. <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't take other. All right, you kids. Now, how can you say how we first come to see you? On the television. On the television. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be like. Um, I don't know, the 18th of November? If my maths oh. is right. Is it no, the 18th? You don't, you don't my maths is little, wrong, I'm not good no, at maths. You literally, brother. When's the premiere? Oh. Oh, no, I, I know what you mean. Okay. So it's um, episode three, I think, is the first. Am I allowed In to the say? course yeah. of time, we will yeah. reunite the audience with Roger and Brianna okay. in the 20th century. <laughs> we will catch up to them and where their relationship is and perhaps, like, visit other members of the family eventually. Oh, yeah. Sophie, Who? Sophie, where's Brianna's head at? Where is she? Where's so, where, Sophie, where is she at, Brianna? And especially in terms of how she feels about him. Um, well, at the beginning of the season, obviously Brianna is still dealing with the sort of aftermath of letting her mother go back. Um, she's essentially become an orphan in that respect. Um, she kind of went from having two parents to one to three to none. Uh, so it's been pretty intense for her. Um, so she's changed her life a lot. She's now studying engineering at MIT. She's having a sort of long distance relationship with Roger, um, which is quite ambiguous at the beginning in terms of sort of how much of a long distance relationship they've been having. Um, but yeah, you may or may not see them reunited at an airport. Um, and then yeah, it just kind of goes from there. But it's, you know, the season sort of follows that typical Roger and Brianna pattern in terms of as soon as they get close together, they torn apart so yeah and it's mostly Enjoy it where it mostly lasts. Brianna's fault it's usually Brianna's fault <laughs> I mean Roger's there he's committed he's totally devoted to Brianna any complications that arise I'm sorry you're looking at me like you want to kill me so <laughs> I'm just saying that it's it's all give from can Roger. I just say we have the phrases here so don't yeah, that's mess. why I'm moving over that's why I'm moving over this yeah. Yeah. you mess with one you mess with all okay cool <laughs> What are your intentions? <laughs> I just want to say right now, while you're there, that my intentions towards your, you know, pretend daughter are pure, <laughs> honest, and of love. What say you? <laughs> I doth approve. Uh, Sam, that reminds me, I've been meaning to ask you, when Richard first joined the show, were you worried that you would no longer be considered the show's biggest heartthrob? <laughs> can, I, can I just throw a spanner in the works here and say that Rolo is going to be the show's biggest yes, heartthrob? Yes, Rolo is the biggest heartthrob so. on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, honestly, I'm already nominating Rick for, for James Bond, don't you think? Oh, I think he's the new Bond. What do you mean, no? <laughs> it's not your question. Wow. Sam is given a heartfelt, honest, you know, that's just why. It's not, it's not your place to say no. no I'm not. <laughs> get out. Just get out. <laughs> Sorry, I'll pay you later. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, back to sorry, you, back to you and, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Sam, you're not mad at me, are you? You're not mad, are you, that I asked you that? Me? Uh, yeah. No. Oh, no. No, just speak to her next time, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to Katrina next. All right. All right, Katrina, so Claire makes such a big sacrifice by leaving behind her daughter and her life as a surgeon. Uh, to go back to 18th century. Um, how did you reconcile that decision in your head, knowing how ambitious and independent Claire is? Um, wow. Well, I mean, the leaving of Brianna, I think, was a really hard thing to try and 
you know, understand in in our sense. I mean, I, but you had to think of the time. You know, not that long ago when I was, you know, my dad, I remember talking to him and many of his aunts ended up immigrating to lots of places in all over the world and they never saw them again. So when you're talking about the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, if somebody immigrated or if they left a country, it's a pretty big chance that they were never going to see them again. So in some ways, I had to think of it in, in that sense, that um, somehow that made sense to me. I don't know why. But in terms of Claire going back to Jamie and giving everything up for him, she lived with Adam for 20 years. She fulfilled her professional needs and goals in many ways. Brianna was grown. So this other part of her life that had been lacking and that hole that she'd been living with for 20 years, um, that's <laughs> what she had to, that's what she had to go back and, and try and fulfill. So, um, yeah. Yes, that's one. <laughs> Sounds like I dig it. giving this very funny answer. look. And I... All right, Sam, I have a similar question for you. Now, if you, I guess the best way to put it, let's say Jamie had a Tinder account. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tinder camp, did you a say? A Tinder account, and in your bio it said, um, absentee father, <laughs> certainly a murderer, probably doesn't shower that much. I mean, what's left? I mean, is there anything else? I, I mean, you would swipe left like there's no tomorrow. So, and yet, so many women just find him absolutely irresistible. What is it about him that makes all of us want him so much? <laughs> is that kind of hard for Sam to answer about himself or his character? I know. Maybe it's the picture, I don't know. Did he do a cock shot, I'm not sure. <laughs> a what? Um, I think... Uh, Did you get it? He said maybe it was... I think it's probably down to Diana Galvin's character, you know, I think it, you know... I've never been on Tinder. I've never been on Tinder. No, I think, you know, he's, he's such a great character and he's... Can I just ask how many people are on Tinder right now Googling Sam Ewan? <laughs> is there a Tinder category that says King of Men? Is there? The, is that I feel there should be. There should be, shouldn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he... What was your question, Lena? What is your question? I mean, it's legit. So on paper, he has a few strikes against him. I mean, like I said, absentee father. He is a murderer. He's penniless. Penniless. That was another one. He beat his wife. He beat his wife. <laughs> right. I mean, or I, I would, I would swipe right on that. Ditto, ditto. Like, what's the, what is the question? You would swipe right on that. You don't need to look into the bio. I'm sorry, does right mean you're accepting them? Or? Yeah, I think oh, so. Okay. Oh, so you like them? Not that I don't use Tinder, I don't really know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you do. But I'm assuming that is, I'm assuming it's that way. I asked John. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, ask me? Well, I'm I a pure you. good boy. <laughs> Give him some credit, he's on Bumble. <laughs> to answer your question, Lynette. <laughs> Maybe he's a very good cook. He's a very good... F I, think he's a, I think he's always... Um, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> trying, yeah, I'm trying. He's, he's, uh, he, he <sighs> he's a great father. Meryl, <laughs> should you take it? <laughs> Look, Meryl, why don't you help me here? I actually could. Can I help him out? I think you should. Um, I mean, I think we're also looking at things, obviously, from today's standards. And yes, from today's standards, there would be certain things you'd be like, uh, go the other way. But um, back in that time, I mean, Jamie Frazier is a very forward-thinking man for that time. And, and that's why he and Claire make such a great couple, because they're equals. Um, and he's willing to see her as an equal in a time when people 
when men did not see women in that way, and that's what makes us love them both. And love Jamie, that he adores Claire, but also respects her and sees her on an equal level. And he's sensitive, and he is a great father. It is not his fault that he had to send Claire back. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Well done. Uh, that, that, that seems like a lot to put on a Tinder bio. Oh, I know. Maro. You sound me thinks thou doth protest too much. I feel like you're on Tinder a lot. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not. <laughs> I'm swiping left when I see you. All right, so Richard and uh, Sophie, this is for you. So we have a saying in the United States, or maybe it's just in my household, and the phrase is doing the hibbity dibbity. And what? when you say hibbity dibbity, you got to kind of bounce to hibbity dibbity. So I'm not sure. Have you heard that phrase, doing the hibbity dibbity? I haven't. No. Like the hooky This is so great, really. Doing the, the hibbity dibbity. Yeah, that would be. Doing the hibbity dibbity. Yeah, that would be sex. Oh. oh. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard I of that. I thought it was something really a very like... sexy term for sex. Nice. It's really. I know it's not. Well, yeah. That's... Hey, sweetheart, you fancy some hibbity dibbity? <laughs> no thanks, honey. <laughs> That hibbity dibbity last night was something else. <laughs> oh, that cabin had all the hibbity dibbity. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I, so I guess I, you just set it up. Do you say that to her in the fourth episode? Something to that effect? It's something to that effect, yeah. Uh, no, wait, no. Oh, what? Oh, oh. No, hang on. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> can we take the microphone away now, please? He can say it, but, you know. Right. What was the question, though? Is this a discussion that you two have? Will the relationship get to the point where you could at least have the hibbity dibbity discussion? No. I'd like to hope that after several years, the relationship can progress to the point where they might think about it. And things yeah. might heat up to the point where they feel that they're close enough and trust each other enough to be <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna save this. <laughs> what do you think, think about it all? Well, I'm gonna um, counter back to you and give a serious answer. So, um, no, I think... <laughs> Um, I think that's actually a really interesting thing about their relationship this season and that we're talking about, you know, modern women and Claire sort of out of their time. Um, yet we find Brie and Roger in the 70s and actually it's quite interesting to see that Roger has some quite seemingly old-fashioned values. Um, and that actually, what you just asked is an interesting question in terms of that is something that gets between Brianna and Roger because they have very different um, sort of ideas of what a relationship is and how it should or could progress. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, well done. Katrina, I'll, I'll stretch it from there. One of the defining things about this show is the intimate moments between you two. Is the hibbity dibbity? Is the hibbity dibbity. <laughs> I'm getting on board with this now. I like it. So, after all these years, when the script calls for a moment of sex, do the producers step back? Do they give you carte blanche to choreograph it? Or is there still a lot of... I mean, I, I'm being serious here. This is very serious. Uh, are you given freedom, or is there still notes, awkward notes, like, put your leg there and put your hip here? Do you well, have freedom? Let's okay. put your right foot um, No, <laughs> we do not have carte blanche uh, at all. Um, you know, this is, you have, there's scripts and you have to follow what's in the script. Um, but there's always a discussion. And I think, I think what the, one of the biggest discussions we all have going into sex scenes is how can we make it um, have a point and a purpose. And I think, you know, we have that all the time with the writers and with the producers. Because, you know, believe it or not, this is not softcore porn. Um, <laughs> We're, we're making a TV show, and so if there's going to be sex, it has to be there for a reason. And it has to tell you something about where the character's at, or forward the story in some meaningful way. And we always have those discussions. Um, I think if we stopped having those discussions, our show wouldn't be as good as it is. Bravo. 
Sam, did you want to add to that? So in translation, we're always looking for different ways to have hebbity dibbity. <laughs> and believe me, some of Sam's suggestions are very weird. Yeah. <laughs> never gets in the, never gets in the final wheel? script. Yeah. All right, Ron, uh, this year, uh, Terry Dressback, who happens to be your wife, announced that she'll be stepping down from costume designer, which is really kind of sad. What was that discussion like, and did you get on your knees and beg her to just maybe? Uh, you know, it was difficult. You know, Terry had put her, her heart and soul into the show for, you know, a lot of years and uh, lived in Scotland and committed herself to it and I think had designed one of the best shows on television, you know. Yeah. But there came a time when, you know, Terry was tired and Terry had done all that she had to do and had said everything that she wanted to say and had decided that it was time to come home, you know, and it was, it was hard. It was hard in the whole family. Uh, she was living in Scotland, myself and our, our children were living in Los Angeles and, you know, it, it was just sort of the right time to do it. So uh, I, I, as a producer, I'm like, oh my God, don't do that. But as a husband and a father, I'm like, yeah, please come home. So it was kind of like that. All right, Meryl, what's the theme this year? How would you describe the theme going into the season? I think we talked about the theme being home a lot and family and um, the fact that certainly Jamie and Claire have never really had a place to call home. I mean, Claire, since she was a child, really hasn't had a home. Jamie has kind of had to be on the run. Um, and we kind of talk a lot about home is where their hearts are. Like, wherever they are is where their home is. And, and that's kind of the theme of this time, that home will come to them wherever they are. And, and fortunately, their family does kind of follow them. And, and they're trying to set up roots in a new place, unexpected place that they didn't ex expect to be before. And, um, and it's just about how those two make a life together and, and kind of grow roots and, and um, other people may or may not join them. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. So it's, yeah, I, I would say that's the prevailing theme. Okay, we just a few more, I think we have to wrap up. We got a great, great news this year, two more seasons. Will you be true to the books? Is there any discussion of maybe splitting some up, maybe saving first half for a second season? What do you think? You know, every year is different. Every single season we've approached in the same way where we've, we've been open to the possibility of combining books or splitting books. And we just sort of say, what is the best way to tell the story this year in this many episodes? And that's the approach that we're taking in season five and season six. So. You know, uh, you'll just have to wait and see. I mean, we're always open to combining elements. You've seen in previous seasons, we've pulled some things from uh, later seasons into earlier ones and waited to do certain scenes or certain episodes or certain lines of dialogue into later. We're always kind of fluid in how we uh, do the TV show for, uh, uh, versus the, the books. But we do have a commitment to the authenticity of the books and we love the books and we want to tell the best version of the books in a television series that we can. All right. All right, so we didn't have a lot of time to cover stuff because we had so much, so little time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask you a series of yes, no questions and raise your hand when you mean to say yes. And this applies to all of you. Y'all ready? Okay. Oh God. <laughs> yes. They were all playing as well. Took a shot of whiskey before working. This is working on the set. Have you ever taken ever? a shot of whiskey that, before? Oh, was that a question? Ever? Oh. But I needed it. It was season three and it was, you know. You don't uh, have to defend it. You don't have to defend it. You just have to do it. <laughs> secretly or not so secretly consulted a Gallic dictionary. Secretly or not so secretly asked how to pronounce Gallic. Oh, sorry, yes. I had chewed that word up so much. Okay. Asked or shouted to no one in particular, but how did Diana do it? <laughs> More, what was she? <laughs> oh, that's a, bit, that's a good one. What was she thinking? 
uh, asked Richard Rankin to repeat himself because his accent is so thick. <laughs> Thought about personal errands during a scene when you should be thinking about the scene. Thought about personal errands during a scene when you should be thinking about the scene. No? Never, never. Oh, you're such professional. I'm always in, in the scene, in the moment, never okay. thinking about anything else. That's, all right, that's impressive. <laughs> Tweeted while you should have been working. Tweeted while you should have been working. Posted a response to a negative review online under a different name. No, but we did have one day at work in season one when we, well, yeah, we, we, when we were like towards the end of season one, one day Sam decided he would read all the negative reviews from, oh, it was, so it was fun. really funny. Amazon. Although it, also quite mean. It was, it was, but fun. it was very funny. Yeah, it was a, a good day, yeah. Did you, you read them on set? You read them to everybody? Yeah, we, we took to, turns. Just to us. Yeah, we we, we kind of just read them and laughed. It's, it's, we should do it. It's like, what's the bad, bad tweets thing they do on TV? Yeah, it's like mean tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Bad yeah. reviews, it's yeah. great. Oh, that's a good video I did. Okay, good. Uh, spoke in a calm but very firm voice. Do you know who I am? Oh. John Bell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Always in a joking manner, come on. <laughs> Did a few extra push-ups or sit-ups before doing a semi-nude scene. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of 